the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Though people may be joining us from many regions, we acknowledge that the Church of St. Stephen in the Fields stands on occupied land, the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat and Petwin nations, land covered by the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant. Treaty 13 and the William are also relevant to this territory. We acknowledge that we have broken the treaties. We acknowledge the damage done by colonialism and the role that our church has played in this. And we pledge ourselves to work for a future of justice and reconciliation. Saints still striving for all your saints at rest. Your holy name, O Jesus, forevermore be blessed. You rose our King victorious that we might wear the and ever shine in splendor, reflected from your throne. All praise, O oh Lord, for Stephen, who martyred, saw you stand to help in time of torment. You plead at God's right hand, like you, our suffering Savior, his enemies face. If God receive my spirit, his faith in death confess. Then let us praise the Father, and worship God the Son, and sing to God the Spirit, the eternal three and one. Who are the ransomed number who stand before the throne? Ascribe all power and glory and praise to God alone. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon 
and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everyone. With you. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace, Peace, Peace everyone. You all. Ash. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. Peace to his people on earth, Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us grace, O Lord, that like Stephen we may learn to love even our enemies and seek forgiveness for those who desire our hurt. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. At the beginning of the reign of King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house, and speak to all the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord. Speak to them all the words that I command you. Do not, do not hold back a word. It may be that they will listen, all of them, and will turn from their evil way that I may change my mind about the disaster that I intend to bring on them because of their evil doings. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, If you will not listen to me, to walk in my law that I have set before you, and to heed the words of my servants the prophets, whom I sent to you urgently, though you have not heeded, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. Priests, and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, It is the Lord who sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now therefore amend your ways and your doings, and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will change his mind about the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, here I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, 
you will be bringing innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. And I put my trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy. For you have seen my affliction, you know my distress. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And in your loving kindness save me. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and others of those from Sicilia and Asia, stood up and argued with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit in which he spoke. Then they secretly instigated some men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes. Then they suddenly confronted him, seized him, and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, This man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed on to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Then the high priest asked him, Are these things so? And Stephen replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. You are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors did not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, and now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. When they heard these things, they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. 
and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he looked down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to them, Therefore I send you prophets, sages, and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town so that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly I tell you, all this will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This is the tenth year I have preached on Stephen for you. Um, not even counting the fact that we also observed Stephen on Boxing Day this last year because it was a Sunday. So I'm not sure I have anything to say that's going to be dramatically different, but perhaps that's not a bad thing. This parish, even more than most, has taken on the character of its patron saint in quite a deep way. So our patronal festival is an opportunity, in a way, for an annual examination of our collective identity and vision, a review of our mission statement, as it were. Of course, we don't hear Stephen's full story in the readings today, which focus really on only one aspect, his death as the first Christian martyr. But Stephen was also several other things. For a start, he was the first deacon of the church. The establishment of the Order of Deacons, which is described in the Book of Acts, is fascinating to me because it marks the exact moment when you can see the early church start to go off track. The moment when the original de apostles decide they are too busy and important to pursue work of service, of so diaconia, which Christ himself had specifically named as his life's work and set up the order of deacons to take care of that for them while they studied and prayed. Which is not to say there's anything inherently wrong with study and prayer. They are good things and entirely necessary. But between that and feeding vulnerable widows, there is actually not much doubt about what comes closer to imitating the actual life of Jesus. The church has tried to express this perhaps clumsily, by making the diaconate the basis of all ordained orders, insisting that anyone who is to be a priest, or even a bishop, must be a deacon, first and forever. But all too often still this is treated as a kind of ascension out of a lower level to a higher level rather than understanding that the service of the most marginalized and vulnerable is the essential earth from which all devotion and all knowledge must grow and can never be left behind. But there is more going on than that even in Stephen's story. That first generation, the apostles and those closely around them, were Palestinian Jews who spoke Aramaic. Jesus himself had been a Palestinian Jew who spoke Aramaic as a first language. Stephen's name, like the names of all the others ordained deacon with him, is a Greek name. So most likely he was a part of the Jewish diaspora, had been raised somewhere else in the empire, probably spoke Greek as a first language strange and foreign to the original apostles. And the problem which led to the creation of the deacons in the first place was a cultural problem. It was the Greek-speaking Jews who saw their widows, their vulnerable ones, particularly neglected, ignored apparently in favor of those more, more like the original apostles. This parish has, for most of its history, shown an uncommonly clear vocation to diaconia, to the sometimes dirty and difficult work at the sharp edges of the hurt world, which no one else wants much to do. This parish has paid attention to those who are different, sometimes frightening, has worked towards a real, hard, true inclusiveness. It's become more and more obvious as the pandemic years grind on 
as the economy becomes more and more divided between the super rich and the desperate, as the real effects of climate change start rolling out, that this parish is called to a moment and steps up to answer. I've always been proud of this parish, but never more proud than I've been over the last few years as challenge after challenge hits us from different directions and the parish continues to respond. And it is you, all of you who have done this, who have claimed diaconia and inclusion as your own, who will continue to do so as we face an ever more uncertain future. I think many of us have come to this church because we've felt not quite at home, not quite inside, strange in our own different ways. Not unlike Stephen, maybe an outsider, a bit of a stranger, even before adopting the strange new belief in the crucified and risen Christ. Maybe partly because it was necessary for him to work harder to claim the story as his own, that it became a story worth his whole life. Peter, throughout the early chapters of Acts, is rummaging in the prophets and the Psalms to try to, to find ways of putting this overwhelming new experience into words. But none of his efforts come close to the comprehensive and exhaustive narrative which Stephen produces before his death, which takes up an entire long chapter of the book of Acts. We only get the first phrase and then his wrap-up paragraph. Stephen goes right back to the beginning of the story of the covenant, that one story which all Jews everywhere knew as their origin, the calling of Abram away from his home. And he marches his hearers right through the entire history of Israel in some detail, right up to the moment, shaping it all into a story which points to this moment, this time and place, the events which are both the final meaning toward which all the narrative tends and the only point from which the story can be properly understood, the blaze of resurrection light which consumes even the darkness of his own impending death. He tells it as a story which makes sense, even if that seems absurd. And that death itself is a complex one. It's a sort of exemplar of lateral violence, the oppressed turning on the oppressed. Jesus was murdered by, first and foremost, Roman imperial violence aided by some of the religious elite among his own colonized people. But here it is violence within the colonized community itself, the already occupied people turning on one of their own, but not quite one of their own. Just foreign enough, maybe, to be the scapegoat, to be that object of violence which would begin to sever the community, to create divisions which have not yet healed and across which the violence has often been directed the other way, as the long history of Christian pogroms and anti-Semitism shows. And at this moment, Stephen simply stands and keeps on saying his truth, because that is all he can do. And he dies unresisting, without anger or judgment, just telling that story until he can speak no longer. We are living, I hardly need say this, in very difficult times. In a world which seems smaller and meaner and more cruel every day. With many people seeming not only to be unconcerned about the vulnerable, but actually to take a sort of twisted pleasure in their suffering. In a social climate which seems to encourage people in their worst impulses towards violence, exclusion, dehumanization, towards resentment and selfishness. We need to tell another story. The world needs and needs desperately a story which makes sense, a story of care and love. 
like Stephen, we need to take that story. The story of a god who came to a nameless group of slaves and called them out of empire. The same god who came as a refugee child among the poor and died for love at the hands of power and rose. And make it our own. We need to make it ours through our work for all those who suffer, through the service which carries no prestige or special honor. We need to make it ours through the acknowledgement of our own difference and vulnerability. We need to make it ours enough that we can tell it, tell it in the face of anger, tell it in the face of power, keep telling it even if it seems that no one is listening. It will cost us, maybe not exactly the way it cost Stephen, but in some way it will. But it is our calling, pointless as it may on some days seem. It could have seemed that way to Stephen, certainly, as he died unheeded. But we are given another important detail. It, the last sentence. One of those present at his death was a young man named Saul. As far as lateral violence goes, Saul was in an obvious position to deploy what privilege he had, and he did have privilege. He was both a Jew and a Roman citizen, which was a status not shared by many. Many, many people in Rome, not only Jews, were not citizens. He was highly educated, multilingual, he was in with the best circles in his own community, but also had the safety and privilege available through his connection to Rome. Stephen's death did not change Saul right away. Indeed, he seems to have swung into a full-scale campaign of violence afterwards, perhaps trying to justify what he'd been involved in by doing it over and over. But then, some unclear time later, he fell on the Damascus Road in the face of a light no one else could see, and nothing after that could be the same. We are meant to understand that this was one of the moments which led towards Damascus, that Saul, who became Paul, never forgot his complicity in this first murder but also never forgot what he had seen that day. The vision of human possibility, what we can endure when we know we are loved, what we can forgive when we know we are forgiven. As I've said before, it is no small thing to belong to a parish dedicated to St. Stephen, to become the body which is bread for the poor, to be deacon, martyr, creator of meaning. But it is this to which we have all been invited, however we came to these doors. Come forward then and claim it, this church in Stephen's name. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death 
and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day, commemorating the feast of our patronal Saint Stephen, who gave his life for his faith in you, let us pray to the God who loves us, knows our needs, and provides for us. To the bidding, feed us, Father. The response is, with the bread of life. With the bread of life. As the traveling people of God, we pray for a deepening hunger for the things of God and the loosening of our grip on all the wants and expectations which prevent us from moving forward God's way. We give thanks for and ask your blessings upon those who have nurtured us from this pantry of your word. Archbishop Andrew, Mother Maggie, Mother Andrea, Deacon Elizabeth, and Max, our postulant. We pray that all members of our congregation of St. Stephen in the Fields will satisfy their spiritual hunger through you. In our parish family this week, we pray for Zoe Henderson, Blake Hensridge, Maggie and Simone Helwig and Ken Simons, Helga Holland, Adonica Huggins and Atiba Fleury Huggins, Jessica Humphreys and Finn, Charlie Huskin, Marguerite Hunt, Vincent and Rebecca Hunt, Christy, Raphael, Raphael Jr. and Regis Ionegbo. Feed us, Father. With the bread of life. As brothers and sisters with the whole of creation, we pray for respect and reverence among people, regardless of wealth or status for responsible sharing of resources and consideration for the natural world of our fragile and beautiful planet. We pray for all women to have the right to education and the freedom to decide what is right for their own bodies, to be comfortable in their own skin, free from bullying and shaming. We give thanks for those who are committed to all forms of social justice and include them in their daily works. In the Canadian Church this week, we lift up the Right Reverend Helen Kennedy, Bishop, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Capel. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, the Dean Council and Congregations of the Northern Area of the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. In our diocese, for the staff of the Synod office. And we give thanks and pray for the outreach and advocacy work of St. Mary Richmond Hill, its roadside food cupboard, support of Richmond Hill Community Food Bank, housing advocacy and refugee sponsorship projects. For St. Matthew the Apostle Oriel, its after-school reading program at Forest Manor Public School, support for Oriel Food Space Mo Moorlands Baby Bundles programs, parishioners who volunteer in the community, including North York General Hospital, and the Education and Advocacy for Truth and Reconciliation, and for St. Matthew First Avenue, its refugee sponsorship. In the worldwide Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Mambili, the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, Niger Province. 
We pray that their words and actions will fill all those who are in need. Feed us, Father. With the bread of life. We ask for daily bread. We pray for those who are physically starving, for all who hunger emotionally or try to survive on spiritual junk food, for those who mistrust God's feeding. We give thanks for all healthcare professionals and frontline workers who have worked tirelessly through the pandemic to ensure our safety and to meet our needs. And we pray for their financial, mental, physical, and spiritual well being. May there be a speedy and equitable solution to the health care crisis facing us at this time. This week, prayers are asked for those who are sick or in special need. Howard, Phyllis, Vanesta, Becky, Teja, Beck, Lovina, Michael, Victor, Kadeem, Kim, Marvin, Ed, Roy, Leone, Dave, Sue Ann, Terry, Jean, Alicia, Georgina, Andy Alley, Maria, Cheryl, Emily, Rena, Laura, Shirley, Darla, Catherine, Tucker, David, Misha, Jose, and Joanne, Rihanna, Bodhi, Nadia, Jane, Kim, Jason, Liam, and family, and Charles. Remember the lost and homeless and all who suffer through war and injustice. May your healing hand be upon them and restore them to good health. Feed us Lord. with the bread of life. As we remember with love those who have journeyed through physical death, we pray that, nourished by the bread of life, they may travel on eagles' wings into the brightness of eternal life. This week, we remember all those who have lost their lives in recent days through disease, famine, violence, or by their own hand. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. As we prepare and eat our food each day, we pray for those who grow and manufacture it, distribute and sell it, shop for it and cook it, and for those with whom we share food. We remember Jeremiah's warning to remember to amend our ways and doings and obey your voice. And we are encouraged by Stephen's vision of the Son of Man standing at your right hand. And we ask that you build us up with your spiritual feeding, which sustains us forever. And as we grow increasingly aware of our spiritual hunger, we give thanks for the wonders of your feeding throughout our days. And we ask that you accept these prayers for the sake of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, what their joy and their glory must be, those endless Sabbaths the blessed ones see, crowns for the valiant, weary ones rest. God shall be all and in all ever blessed. What are the monarch, the court, and the throne? What are the peace and the joy that they own? Oh, that the blessed ones who in it have share, all that they feel could as fully declare. Through Jerusalem, name we that shore. Vision of peace that brings joy evermore. Wish and fulfillment can severed be now. Nor the thing prayed for come short of the prayer. 
There, where no troubles distraction can bring, we the sweet anthems of Zion shall sing. While for thy grace, Lord, their voices of praise, thy blessed people eternally raise. Now in the meantime, with hearts raised on high, we for that country must yearn and must sigh, seeking Jerusalem, dear native land, through her long exile on Babylon's strand. Lo, before God with our praises we fall, of whom and in whom and through whom are all. Praise to the Father and praise to the Son, praise to the Spirit with them ever one. Let us pray. Refuge of those who trust in you, we give thanks for the witness of Stephen. Accept our offering this day, and grant your peace and consolation to those who suffer for your truth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin 
into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your children through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation the head of the church and the author of our salvation by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Give us this bread forever. I am the vine, you are the branches. May we dwell in him as he lives in us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us Let us pray. Merciful God, hear our prayer for all your children who suffer for truth, justice, and freedom. Strengthen their witness and keep them with us under the protection of your wings. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. God working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you, everyone. Um, we can't have a post-service potluck exactly, but uh, we can stay afterwards anyway. Um, obviously, we have our in-person service, uh, which will be quite similar to this service tomorrow at 10.30 at the church, Sunday, 10.30. Um, and Monday, we have our next vaccine clinic. Um, we've added a few extra vaccine clinics given the wider eligibility. Um, Monday from 1 to 6 p.m., uh, first, second, third, or fourth shots for anyone who needs them. Uh, we have shots for 5 to 11 year olds, but I'm not sure if there will be shots for the uh, 6 month to 5 year age bracket yet. I'm not sure those have been made available to Toronto Public Health yet. Um, but uh, anybody between 5 and whenever who is in need of a shot, do for a shot, will be there. It's a very, very friendly, low barrier community clinic. Uh, the Bible study and meditation is on hiatus for the month of August. <coughs> Evening prayer is continuing this week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 5 o'clock in the church. And the discussion group is also continuing this week uh, on Zoom at 7 p.m., working our way through the second season of Gentleman Jack. Uh, drop in Friday from 6 to 10 p.m. and breakfasts from 7 to 8.30 on Saturday and Sunday, of course. Um, a little advance, oh, and the next vaccine clinic will be Sunday the 14th, a week from Sunday, and it will be the same 8.30 to 1.30 as the previous Sunday clinic, if that happens to be convenient for you or anyone you know. Um, I will be away on my summer break um, right for right, starting right at the end of the service on the 21st, Sunday the 21st. Um, I'll be leaving that day. And returning, um, all being well with Air Canada, I will be returning the evening of September 3rd, so I'll be here for Sunday, September 4th. Um, the Reverend Dan Cranley will cover the Sunday in-person service on the 28th. And uh, Aunt Mother Andrea will cover the two Saturday Zoom services, which I will miss. She'll also cover the Wednesday noon mass. Um, we're still working out whether evening prayer will continue um, or continue some day, days or all the regular days. Um, and the discussion group will also be on hiatus while I'm away. The uh, outreach programming will continue except that the corner drop-in is moving into our space for a few weeks while they have renovations, so they will be running the Saturday breakfast for a few weeks. Uh, Janet will also be away from the 21st until roughly Sunday the 28th. Um, so if you have administrative or rental inquiries in the meantime, probably better hold them for a week. Um, for urgent pastoral matters, you can always contact Mother Andrea or Deacon Elizabeth. Anyway, that's a few weeks in the future, but wanted to let people know. Um, and I think that's everything I need to announce, so I'll hand over to Adonica. Blessings, Mother Maggie, Mother Andrea, Ethan Elizabeth, to our wardens, Leroy, Martin, and Annette, and to all of those who helped bring us this service tonight, including our technician, choir, musicians, uh, readers, and intercessor. And specifically, we want to thank Sarah, Janet, Catherine, Hugh, Sue Ann, and Leroy. Um, we invite everyone uh, to join us on Zoom uh, so that you can join us after the postlude with your tea or coffee for lively conversation. Of course, we appreciate everyone who joins us on all of our platforms. Um, and thank you very much.